Hey art friends, happy new year! In this video I picked out 5 of my favorite art lessons from 2020. Hope you enjoy my favorite art lessons from this past year. Goodbye! Hey art friends, they're gonna be drawing hot chocolate! Yeah, not just any old hot chocolate, pumpkin spice hot chocolate. Yeah! Well, I love anything pumpkin spice. Yes! We hope you're gonna follow along with us. We're gonna use markers, but you can use whatever you have at home to draw with. You also need... Some paper and something to color with! Yeah, alright, let's start! Yes! We're first gonna draw the whipped cream on top of our hot chocolate. We're gonna draw a curve in the middle of our paper. This is the part that's connecting to our hot chocolate, the bottom of the whipped cream. Then we're gonna draw a little bump that comes up like this on the left and also over here on the right. Let's draw a couple more bumps. And we're going towards the middle. It kind of looks like a triangle shape. We could draw two more over here. And then up here at the top, we're gonna to draw a curve, one bump that comes up further. And then we're gonna swirl around the other side. It looks like an S curve. And then at the top, we're gonna to curve back down to the bottom. That's our pyramid of whipped cream. Now out of the top of our whipped cream, let's draw the cinnamon sticks. We're gonna draw two that come out, two lines that come out over here on the left. And then up at the top, we're gonna draw a little swirly spiral. Then we can also draw a little line coming down the middle. That makes it look like a cinnamon stick instead of a straw. Yeah. Let's repeat that same step for another cinnamon stick. Two lines together. And then we can draw that little swirl up at the top to connect the two lines. Now on this one, mine are a little closer together, so I'm not gonna draw a line down the middle. Okay, now let's, on the right side, let's draw a backward C. This is for a little pumpkin that's hanging out on our whipped cream. And then we're gonna draw a little, two little curves coming out of the top and then we'll connect them at the top. There we go. Now let's draw the hot chocolate. We're gonna start here on the left side and we're gonna curve out around like this and then look at this, I'm matching the bottom of our whipped cream, comes around and then connects over on the right side. We're gonna start here on the left side of the hot chocolate and we're gonna draw a curve that comes up further and then connects back into the whipped cream. And we'll do the same thing over here. Come up like this and then connect in. Now we're gonna draw the rest of our mug. We're gonna start over here on top of that curve. We're gonna come around and we'll match that same curve and then we're gonna come down like that. Then we're gonna do the same thing over here on the right. We're gonna start here at the top and then follow the shape around and then come down. So we've got this really tall, hot chocolate, well, pumpkin spice hot chocolate. Now we're gonna connect the bottom. So we want these two lines to match, come down to the same length, and then we're gonna curve the bottom, and look at my curve that connects, or it connects over here to the right, but it also matches up here at the top. Yeah, all right, now let's draw the handle on our mug. We'll first draw a backwards C, a small one, then we're gonna draw a bigger one outside that comes around further and then connect back in. Let's also add a funny face to our mug. I'm gonna start over here and draw two circles. I'm gonna draw one on the left side and then one over here on the right side. Then let's draw the mouth. I'm gonna draw a diagonal line and you could draw a different funny face if you want. You don't have to draw the same. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm going to draw a big, this is kind of like our hot chocolate uh, fa funny face that yeah. we drew a long time ago. Then I'm going to draw the tongue inside. Are you going to leave it just like that? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Perfect. I'm going to also add a small circle for the highlight in our, the eyes to make them look shiny and friendly. And then we can also color in the big circle. I'm also going to color in the top of my mouth. Now, if we go too fast or we fast forward the video, you guys at home can always pause it. Yeah, you can pause the video for extra time. 
Oh, I'm also going to draw a funny face over here for my pumpkin. I'm going to draw another eye here, another eye over here, and then maybe a screaming mouth. Oh, maybe he's, he's a little worried he's getting dipped in the hot chocolate. Oh, and then we also need to add a little swirl up here at the top so that it looks like it's really hot. Kind of looks like a question mark. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Jack, we did it! We finished drawing our pumpkin spice hot chocolate. But we still need to color it. Yeah, this part we're gonna fast forward, but at the end you can pause the video to match the same coloring. You ready to fast forward? Yeah. We finished coloring our drawings. I love you so much. Especially that face. Yeah. He looks very serious. <laughs> I think he's worried what's gonna happen next. I know. I'm gonna drink it. We used our markers to color our drawings, but you can use whatever you have at home, like colored pencils, or even crayons, or oil pastels. And you don't have to color it the same way. Oh yeah, you could change the colors. You could also add a design to the mug, or even add a background. We hope you had a lot of fun drawing your hot chocolate. Yeah, and we'll see you later, art friends. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, art friends, so you're gonna be drawing a folding surprise present. Yeah, a scary present. We hope you're gonna follow along with us. I really like the Nightmare Before Christmas movie. I like that it's about Christmas, but also scary, yeah. uh, about Halloween. So we're gonna do a drawing that's kind of like that, where it's cute when it's folded up, but then when you open it, it's scary. Yes. We hope you're gonna follow along. You need a marker or something to draw with. Some and paper and something to color with. Yeah, let's start. Okay. We're first gonna fold our paper. Let's take the top edge and fold it in half, fold it down to the bottom, line it up, and once you've got it lined up, you can hold it down. Okay, this is, <laughs> it's taking me a little bit longer to line that up. Crease it down the middle and then out to the corners. Okay, now we're gonna take this top flap, fold it back up to the top and crease it down. Then flip your paper over and we're gonna take the top flap and repeat that same step. Fold it up to the top and crease it down. Then take that last fold and unfold it, flatten it out. This will just be a guide fold for us. Then we're gonna flip our paper back over. When you're all done, it should open up like this. Next, we're gonna put a scratch piece of paper underneath our drawing paper. It doesn't have to be red. It can be whatever color or scratch paper that you have laying around your house or classroom. Now we're ready to draw. Next, we're gonna draw our present. Now half of the present will be above this fold and the other half will be below. So first, let's draw the side of our present coming down. So we're gonna start above and then cross over the fold. Then we're gonna turn it into the letter L. We'll draw the bottom of the letter L. Now I'm gonna start up here because it's a little easier to draw this way over the fold. And we're gonna draw the right side of our present coming down and connecting to the bottom. Then we can connect the top two lines together. That's the general shape of our present. You could really change this shape. It could be a circle. It could, you could really make it into any shape you want. You could also add as many details to your present. Let's add ribbon. We're gonna draw two lines coming right down the middle. This is the ribbon wrapping around the outside of our present. Then we can draw a little knot on the top for the bow. And then we can draw the bow sticking out to the side and then connecting down to the top of the present. And let's repeat that same shape on the other side. We could also add little wrinkles in the bow, two little short lines coming out of the knot. Let's also add the ribbon or the end of the ribbon that's coming out to the side. So we'll draw a little curve coming out, and then we could draw a sideways V and then connect it back into the box. Now I use the same curve right there so it matches, and then we can repeat that same step over here. Draw a long curve, then a sideways V and a short curve going back into the present. We did it, we finished our present. Oh, let's add eyes to our present, cartoon eyes. We're gonna okay. draw a circle on the left and a matching circle over here on the right. Yeah, just like that. And then we can also add a highlight, smaller circle inside to make the eyes look shiny. 
There you go. And then we'll color in the big circle, but leave the little circle white. Now, if we ever go too fast, what can our friends do? Pause the video. Yeah, if you need extra time. Okay, now we're gonna add one more line on our drawing. I'm gonna add a mouth. We're gonna draw a line straight across. Now, th that line was below the fold, so I'm gonna repeat that same line, but draw this one on top of the fold. That way, when you open it up, you can see a straight line up here and also down here at the bottom. Go ahead and open it up and then flatten out your drawing. This is really cool. Half of our present is up here at the top and half of it is down at the bottom. The center part is where we're going to draw all of the scary stuff. Yeah. Now we wanna make sure that we draw below the top fold. So below that part and above the bottom fold. That way when we fold it up, it's hidden. All the scary stuff is hidden inside. Let's first draw the scary teeth. Now you guys could draw scary teeth any way you want. Let's draw first a W, a really long W up here. This is kind of like our cupcake monster. Yeah. We're gonna draw another V, a curved V over here, and just keep going until you get to the very end of the present. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here on the right side, but I'm curving them the other direction. Let's repeat that same step, but flipped upside down. We're gonna draw an M, curved M for the bottom teeth in the middle, and then we can repeat those same shapes upside down V's all the way to the end, and we'll do the same thing over here. Now let's draw the tongue, a super scary tongue. I'm gonna start here, and I'm gonna curve this way, and then back around like this, and then I'm gonna curve like that, really. <laughs> you could curve that any way you want, actually. And then let's draw the other side of the tongue. So I'm gonna come out this way, curve around. Oh, yes, that's scary to me. <laughs> uh, I would not wanna open up a present and see that come out. Now let's make the tongue look 3D. We're gonna add curves to the tongue. We're gonna make the tongue striped, kinda of like a candy cane. So I'm gonna draw the curves going this way then when you come down here, you could actually curve them going the other direction. Whoa, and then look at this. They're gonna get really big going this way. And then when you get to the teeth, you can imagine the stripes going behind the teeth to make it look more 3D. You did it, good job, Jack. That looks really cool. Then let's draw the back of the mouth. We're gonna draw a line right here that connects down to the tongue. We'll imagine it going behind the tongue and connecting down here to the bottom. Let's do another line on the outside of that or the inside, whichever one works best. That makes it look thicker on the mouth. Then we can do that same thing over here I'm gonna start on the outside, we'll curve down, and then connect down here at the bottom. And then we can draw the other line right next to it. Let's add one more thing to our present. Let's add more ribbons that actually look like his arms or her arms. We're gonna draw a curve, it comes up, and then back down like that. Let's draw another curve right next to it that matches, maybe smaller. And then right here at the bottom, let's draw a upside down V to connect. Doesn't that look like the end of the ribbon? Yeah. But it kind of looks like a claw too. It does. Now let's do another one like that, except up here above the tongue. You wanna make sure that you draw below this top fold. Okay, let's add another curve. I'm gonna use overlapping to make it look more 3D. Like that, and then we'll draw upside down V to connect those two lines. You could add as many of these ribbons as you want. I'm gonna add another one right here. Maybe our present has lots of arms, ribbon arms coming out. And maybe another one over here too. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> 
Um, okay, one more. We're gonna add another one over here. <laughs> Jack, we did it! We finished drawing our present monster. But we still need to color it. Yeah, we do. <laughs> this part we're gonna fast forward, but at the end, you can pause the video if you wanna use our drawing as inspiration for your drawing. You ready to fast forward? Yes. Jack, we did it. We finished coloring our present monster. It looks awesome. And we also added this little circle around the eyes just to make them look even cuter. <laughs> <laughs> Let's show our friends what's inside. Ready? Three, Three two, two, one. one. Rawr! Rawr! <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> you guys can pause the video right now to match our same coloring. Or you can color them any way you want. Yeah, you could add different colors. You could also add even more details. I use a white colored pencil to add highlights on top of the markers, but you can use whatever art supplies you have at home or in your classroom. You could even paint this. Ooh, that would be cool. We hope you had a lot of fun drawing your present monster. We do, we hope you had a lot of fun and we hope you take time to add extra details to the inside of your folding surprise. And we'll see you later, our friends. Goodbye. Goodbye. Roar. Oh, you could turn this into a puppet too. Yeah. That would look really cool. Roar. Rock. We're gonna draw a really cool insect today. We hope you're gonna follow along with us. What are we gonna draw? A fly. Yeah, a realistic fly. It's gonna look really cool. Now you need something to draw with. We're gonna use markers. You also need some paper and what something else? Something to color with. Something to color with. All right, let's start. Yes. We're first gonna start by drawing the body. We're gonna draw an oval shape in the middle of our paper. Now we're gonna draw him realistic, but we're gonna keep it really simple. It's gonna be fun. Nice. Now let's also add some segments for that middle part of his body. I'm just gonna draw two lines. Then we're gonna draw the bottom part of his body. We're gonna come down like this, and then we're gonna come back up. Looks like a U shape. The letter U. Good job. Now this middle part is called the thorax, and this part is called the abdomen. Now we're gonna draw his head. Let's draw another shape, kind of like we did down at the bottom, but upside down and a little smaller. So upside down U shape. Now let's draw his eyes. We'll start here in the middle and we're gonna draw a curve that comes out to the side on the left and then we'll do the same thing on the right. The flies have really big eyes. Let's also add segments down here on his abdomen. That looks like a bee, but when we finish coloring him, he's gonna look really cool. Now let's draw his legs. We'll first start over here on the left, and we're gonna draw a skinny upside down U, and we'll do the same thing on the right. So he's symmetrical on both sides, the same on the left and also on the right. So everything we draw over here, we're also gonna draw on the right side. So let's draw another upside down U for the next segment in his legs. And then we're gonna draw a really long upside down U, it's so skinny that it actually just looks like a line. Then we can add his little feet at the end, two little lines. Okay, now let's repeat that same step over here. Draw a skinny longer U shape and then a really long one coming out back in and then two little lines for the feet. Okay, now let's draw the middle leg. I'm gonna draw a short U shape right here. Oh, that's a little thicker, that's okay. Then we're gonna draw a longer skinny one going up. Okay, let's do that same thing over here. A short one coming out to the side and a skinny one going up, back down. All right, and then we can draw the long skinny part coming out to the side. Same thing over here. Now if we ever go too fast during a step, you guys can always pause the video and take extra time. Let's add those little feet, the two little toes sticking out. <laughs> Now let's draw his back legs. We're gonna draw another U shape, a short one, and then a long one coming down. Still skinny though. Don't wanna draw them too thick. And then we're gonna draw a longer one coming up. Diagonal. He's looking really cool. All right, and we can add those two little toes. And then let's do the same thing over here. Short one, and then a long diagonal one coming down. 
and then another diagonal long skinny leg coming out to the side and make it a little longer there we go and then two little toes Burp. all right what's our fly missing wings yeah so we can fly all right <laughs> we're gonna draw a big we're gonna draw a big curve coming down past his first or the bottom foot then we're gonna curve back around like this and come over his abdomen and then right at the end, we're going to connect into his thorax. Okay, let's repeat that same shape on the right side. We'll start over here, draw that big curve coming down, and we want it to look the same on both sides. And then we're going to curve around his leg, over top of his abdomen, and then connect into his thorax. Good job, Jack. Now we are missing one last little thing. What are we missing? Antenna. Yeah, they're really small on a fly. We're just gonna draw two little guys sticking out up at the top. All right, Jack, we did it. We finished drawing our fly. He looks really cool, but not very realistic. Yeah. What do we still need to do? Color it. Yeah, we're gonna color him. This part we're gonna fast forward, but we'll also talk about some of the steps that we did to make him look more 3D, more round. We're gonna do some shading and also highlights. Now at the very end, you guys can pause the video to match the same color. You ready to fast forward? Yeah. Now we colored our fly crazy colors. We used green, yellow, and also blue on the outside. Now I'm using a black colored pencil to add shading on top of it. Cool looking, isn't it? Yeah. Now to keep it a little easier, if you wanted to, you could just color your fly brown. That works too. I think this is gonna be really cool at the end though. It's gonna look super 3D. Yeah. I love how you added the black colored pencil on top of the thorax. And then you're also using a blue colored pencil to add more shading on the abdomen. Now I also use my black colored pencil to come down and add texture to the wings to look, make them look more realistic. And we also colored them in with a light, light gray. And also I used a light gray to add a shadow underneath each of the legs. That makes him look like he's sitting right on top of the paper. Yeah. Next I'm gonna use my black colored pencil to make our fly look hairy. This is gonna make him look really gross. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Jack, I think we did it. We finished coloring our fly. We're just adding a few more hairs to his body. Yeah. It looks so gross, all hairy like that. <laughs> we also used our black colored pencil to add a darker texture, darker uh, part to the wing up here close to his body, where it comes into his thorax. That looks really cool, Jack. I especially love the highlight on his body, also the highlight on his eyes, and I love that his wings look transparent. Yeah. You did such a great job. I love how cool it looks all finished. And I hope you guys are gonna pause the video and you can take time to color your drawings also. You can match our coloring or you could also just color your fly any way you want. You could color them solid brown and just add a few highlights and some more shading to make them look super three dimensional. Yeah. You know, another part that I think helps a lot is to add that shadow underneath each of his legs. Makes him look like he's gonna fly right off of the paper. <laughs> we hope you had a lot of fun drawing your fly. Yeah, we do. We hope you had a lot of fun. I hope you took time to color your flies also. It's amazing how a little color, some highlights, and also shading make it look super realistic. We love you guys so much, and we'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye. Hey, art friends, today we're gonna draw another character from Star Wars. Who are we gonna draw this time? Mandalorian. Yeah, this is gonna be awesome. We hope you're gonna follow along with us. You need something to draw with. We're gonna use markers. You some also paper. need some and paper. Something to color with. Yeah. All right, let's get started. Yes. We're first gonna draw his helmet. We're gonna draw an upside down U shape in the middle of our paper. But we wanna also make sure that we leave it maybe more towards the top so that we have room towards the bottom for his body. Nice. Now on each side, I'm gonna draw a little longer. This is for his helmet. Maybe even a little bit longer. There we go. <laughs> then down at the bottom, we're gonna connect these two lines 
for the bottom of his helmet. Now we're gonna draw another line that matches the bottom across kind of the top of his helmet. Then we're gonna draw two lines down the middle that connect to that curve. Now we're also gonna draw another, we're gonna draw his visor or the part that he looked through. So we're gonna draw another curve right under that first one we drew and it, we're gonna leave space on both sides. Then we're gonna draw a short line down on each side. Now over here on the right, we can draw a diagonal line that comes in towards the middle and then we're gonna draw a diagonal line that connects down to the bottom. Oh yeah, and you can do the same thing on the other side too. We're just gonna match the same line, come towards the middle and then connect to the bottom. Now on each cheek, we're gonna draw that same line, but we're gonna connect to the side of the helmet and then down to the bottom. And we'll do the same thing over here on the right side. Come in and then connect down. Now on the left side, let's draw an upside down U shape and we'll do that same shape over here on the right side. Then over here on the left, let's draw a short line out, down and then connect back in. And the same thing over here on the right, short line, down and then connect back in. We did it, we drew his helmet. Now if we ever went too fast or if you need more time, remember you can always pause the video and take extra time. Now we're gonna draw his body, but let's also draw his cape. So we're gonna draw the part that wraps around his neck. So we're gonna draw two short lines that come out on each side of his chin. Then we'll connect the bottom with a little curve that comes down and then back up. I'm gonna draw little wrinkles too. Let's draw, or little folds in the fabric. We'll draw a curve that doesn't connect all the way to the side, but we'll draw it maybe two on this side. Top one can be shorter than the bottom one. Now we're gonna draw his body. Let's draw two short lines that come down for each side of his body. Then we can connect those two lines at the bottom. Let's draw another line above it for his belt. Then let's draw his legs. We're gonna draw two lines coming down further and and these can come out a little ways. There you go. Now let's draw the inside of his legs. We're gonna draw a line that comes up, curve at the top, and then back down. And then right here, let's draw a line for the top of his boots and the same thing on the other side. Now let's draw his boots. We're gonna draw a long line for his heel on the inside of each leg. And then a short line on the outside. Then let's draw the toes on his boot. We'll draw a diagonal line coming out and then right at the end, curve for his toes. Same thing over here, diagonal line and then curve. Now we can connect his toes to his heel and same thing over here on the right side. Let's draw one more line above that bottom line for a little detail on his boots. That's the sole. Of his boot. He looks really cool, but let's add even more details. Let's start up here on his chest and we're gonna draw the strap that comes across. This held all of the ammo for his uh, dis disintegrator. Yeah, his disintegrating <laughs> gun. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna draw another line for the other side of his strap. And then let's draw short lines going this way for each of those little disintegrator bullets. That was the coolest gun ever. <laughs> and then <laughs> Let's also draw short lines on his belt over here for a couple more of them. Then we can also draw, let's draw two short lines for his belt buckle. Now let's draw his chest plate or armor. Let's draw a diagonal line. It comes down, connects to his, the strap on his chest. And then we can also draw a, another diagonal line that's smaller, it comes in closer to the center, and then we can draw a line over and then back up. Let's also draw a short line right in the middle of that. Now we're drawing him with his old armor, but you could you could change it and draw it with his shiny armor. Now right here, I'm gonna draw a short line on the other side of his strap and then a diagonal line coming out. That's the rest of his chest armor on the other side of the strap. Now on each side of his chest armor, let's draw another line, short line that connects to 
the outside of his body. Okay, let's come down here and draw the rest of his armor on his legs. We'll draw a short line on each side of his leg. And then let's connect those short lines together. Let's also draw the armor that was over here on his leg. We'll draw a line in, down, and then connect back out. Do the same thing on his right leg, down, and then back out. Let's draw his arms, but first we're gonna draw his arm, his shoulder pad armor. So we'll draw a short line, and then a short line out, and then a curve to connect the top. Let's do the same thing over here. It looks like the letter L, and then a curve to connect the top. All right, now let's draw his arms. We're gonna draw a long line that comes down. Then let's draw a shorter line that comes down next to it. And then right here, we're gonna draw a curve that comes around and then connects back to the outside of his arm. I like it, cartoon yeah. arm. <laughs> That's, That's, arm. <laughs> That's okay. So you could draw this a little bit longer if you want the inside line. Yeah. <laughs> we drew him with skinny arms, even though he's got tougher arms in the in the show. <laughs> let's draw let's draw a long line over here coming out of his shoulder. And then we'll draw the short line. And then we'll draw that curve coming around for his fist. <laughs> I like his arms. Yeah. Okay. Now let's draw the armor on his arms. So we're gonna draw a line, short line, and also a short line on his wrist. Then you have these cool plates on his fist. So I'm gonna draw a line down and connect to the outside. And let's repeat those same lines over here. Two lines, short lines across his arm, long line down, and then out. Now we need to draw his cape. Let's start over here and we're gonna draw a wavy line coming out to the side. And then we'll draw a short curve coming down then let's draw another wavy line coming back up to his shoulder. Next, we could draw another wavy line that's gonna come up, down, and then connect to his leg. Now I'm gonna imagine it underneath or in between his legs will come through like that and then connect to his other leg. And then right here, I'm gonna imagine it going behind his leg and then connect up to his hand. All right, let's draw the disintegrator gun on his back. So we're gonna draw two lines coming out from his shoulder. And then we're gonna draw a big curve that comes up high next to his ear. And then on this side, we're gonna draw a shorter one. All right, now we're gonna connect these two lines together. We're gonna curve down, back out, and then connect that's the part that rests against his shoulder, so yeah. it's kind of like a sniper gun. Yeah. <laughs> we did it, we finished drawing our Mandalorian. Your drawing looks super cool, except it's gonna look even better once we do what? Color him. Yeah, we need to color him. This part we're gonna fast forward, but at the end, you guys can pause the video to match the same coloring. You ready to fast forward? Yeah. Jack, give me five. You did such a great job on coloring the Mandalorian. Did you have fun? Yeah. I hope our friends are gonna take time to color their drawings also. Now you can pause it right now to match the same coloring. What do we use to color our drawings? Markers. Yeah, but you could use whatever you have at home or in your classroom. And we use a lot of colors. We use gray, two different grays. Well, a light gray, medium gray, and also a dark kind of brown color. And we also use red for his old armor, but you could use gray, a light gray, for the shiny armor. Yeah. We hope you had a lot of fun drawing the Mandalorian. Yeah, we do. We hope you had a lot of fun. And also be sure to check out Baby Yoda. Yeah. That was our favorite show. We can't, I can't wait for the second season. Same. <laughs> we'll see you later, our friends. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, our friends, here we're going to be drawing a winter village. Yeah, we hope you're going to follow along because it's going to be a lot of fun. And art is always better with friends. Yeah, lots and of friends. Family. And family, yeah. <laughs> You need your drawing supplies. We're gonna use markers. Some paper and something to color with. Yeah, let's start. Yes. We're gonna use a lot of overlapping. We're first gonna draw the things that are closest to us. So let's draw a hill over here. Towards the bottom of our paper, I'm gonna just draw a curve like that. Let's draw another hill that comes out over here and to the right. 
Let's draw our first building on the right side on top of this hill. We're gonna draw two lines going up. I'm gonna start here, draw them coming up. Maybe these come up really high. We're gonna draw a church over here. So this is the steeple. There you go. And then we can connect the top like that. Then let's draw a little bumpy line coming out or a little curve. Maybe there's snow on top of the steeple. Yeah. And then we can draw an upside down V. We'll come up and back down. Let's add a bell in the top of our bell tower here. I'm gonna draw the letter L. And then an upside down L to draw a square. And we could also draw an upside down U for the bell inside and then connect the bottom. And we could also draw a little U for the part on the inside of the bell that rings. Okay, now let's draw the rest of the building. We're gonna draw the roof coming back like this. Now maybe this building goes off the paper too. Let's draw the bottom of the roof coming back. And we could also add little windows. I'm gonna draw little rectangles down here at the bottom. Now I know this part we're going a little fast, so anytime during our lesson, if you need extra time, or if you wanna take extra time to add more details, yeah, you can always pause it. Yeah, pause the video. Oh, we should add a door too. There we go. All right, now we could leave it just like that. Let's move on to our next building. Let's draw a house over here on the left. I'm gonna first draw an upside down V. We're gonna draw it like this. We'll go up and back down. Then we could also draw the bottom of the roof and the top of the roof. And these lines are gonna be the same length. So this one may look a little shorter because we wanna connect with a matching diagonal line like that. Yeah. Then let's draw a straight line down. We could also draw another straight line down here for the side of the house. And we could draw one more over here on the, on the front. Okay, let's add more details like the front door. We could add a few more windows too. These are just squares and rectangles. Oh, I'm gonna add a circle above the door. What are we missing on our house? A chimney. Yeah, let's add a chimney. Especially because we wanna add smoke coming out because we've got a nice warm fire yeah. going on the inside of the house. Let's add a tree behind this house. So I'm gonna draw an upside down V. Now these are, we're just gonna use the same steps we've used in all of our other Christmas tree lessons. Mm -hmm. we'll draw a zigzag line to connect the bottom. We'll draw two more lines coming out. Another maybe zigzag line to connect those and see how I'm only drawing part of it. Yeah. Oh, you're even drawing less because it's even further behind your house. We're gonna draw another layer coming down, connect in, and then we could draw the trunk if you have room. It's really yeah. behind the house, I like that. Now we could add even more trees just like that through our whole drawing. Let's move on to our next level or the next layer behind this one. We're gonna add another hill. Maybe this one comes down and we could come back up. We gotta add a Christmas tree right in the middle of our village. Yes. This one could be even taller. So let's draw an upside down V right here in the middle of our paper. Kind of repeat all of those same steps. Draw a zigzag line to connect the bottom. Good, and then let's draw another layer coming down further. And let's draw another zigzag line to connect. We'll do one more. This one's gonna come down really close to the snow. That way we, when we draw the trunk, it's not too tall. Now let's add another house back here in the distance. We're gonna draw an upside down V, just like we did right here. Gonna repeat all of those same steps. Let's draw the top of the roof. I'm gonna draw the diagonal line right here that matches. We'll do it a little different. Then we're gonna connect the bottom of those two diagonal lines, and I'm going behind the chimney. You also are using a lot more overlapping, and I think that looks really, really cool. Yeah. It's looking super 3D. Now let's draw the straight lines coming down. Mine just are little small lines. And then maybe one back here behind the Christmas tree. 
and down and connect to the ground. Let's add all of those shapes to our house. Now we can mix them up. Maybe this one has a wider door and you can split it down the middle. So there's two doors. I'm gonna add two squares for windows. So change it so it's different than this house. And then we gotta add a chimney, a little chimney on top. Let's add another house, but over here on this side and behind our church. I'm gonna add the upside down V and only draw part of it since it's going behind. You could have it going behind the tree too. And then let's draw the top of the roof going back. Maybe we can imagine that going behind the bell tower too. If yours looks the same, oh, yours is higher. And it's okay if our art friend's drawings are different too. I hope they are different. Yeah. Because the most important thing is to have fun and to practice. Practice. But I also hope that you're changing your drawings. You could add more houses, more Christmas trees. You could even add decorations on the Christmas trees. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. We're going to draw the rest of our house coming down. I'm going to draw the front door. And we could also add, I'm going to draw one really tall window above the door here. I'm going to add one more house back here, just way off in the distance behind this house and also the church. And then a roof on top it goes off the paper, but I wanted to add one more chimney back here so we could have more smoke. That's what we should draw next. Let's add smoke. I'm going to draw this one coming out over here. We draw a wiggly line. And then we could draw another wiggly line, but as it comes up, maybe it gets further away and then connect at the top. All right, let's add more smoke here. This one I'm gonna go just over the roof and then we can do another wiggly line right next to it and then connect in. And let's do one over here on this chimney too. Two wiggly lines, they get further away and then connect at the top. Oh, this looks really cozy. Yeah. And we've drawn everything in the foreground. That was the stuff we drew first. That's the stuff that's closest to us. We also have things in the middle ground. Yeah. That's the stuff in the middle, in between the foreground. And then what's the last thing? The background. The background. That's the stuff that's furthest away in our drawing. And we're going to add a row of trees in our background. So I'm just going to go up and down. We're gonna add just a zigzag line that goes up and down in between the smoke. And we're using a lot of overlapping, aren't we? Yeah, we are. We're gonna draw a zigzag line that goes all the way over and connects to the tree. Then we're gonna draw more zigzag lines. These are, this is just like a forest of evergreen trees way off in the background. So when we keep going, we'll go behind the smoke and then come out to the edge of our paper. Another thing we could add in the background is our moon. Let's draw a big circle back here in the sky. That's a really big moon. Yeah. Jack, we did it. We finished drawing our winter village. We have our foreground, our middle ground, and our background with the moon and the trees. That looks really cool. But we still need to color it. This part we're gonna fast forward, but at the end you can pause the video one more time to match our same coloring. Or you can color your drawing any way you want. Yeah. You ready to fast forward? Yes. Jack, give me five. We did it. We finished drawing and coloring our winter village. Turned out so cool. Yeah, it did. Oh, we also added one last step. We used white acrylic paint and a small little paintbrush to add the snow to our drawing. You could leave that step off, but I, I think it looks extra wintry. Yes. You guys can pause the video right now to match our same coloring. You could also color your drawings any way you want. You could add extra things. Like Santa and his reindeer. Oh yeah, flying across the moon. That would, yeah. be, that would be really cool. We also decorated our tree. Uh, you guys could even add presents and maybe other decorated trees. You could even add a snowman and maybe kids playing out in the snow. Or add Christmas lights to your houses. Oh yeah, that would be way cool. We hope you had a lot of fun drawing your winter village. And we'll see you later, our friends. Goodbye. Goodbye.